Today is Wednesday, May 1, 2024, and today's video is going to talk a little bit about the physical preparation that is required to be ready to perform well in an operating room. These opinions are my own. They um, are based on my own experiences and this is really intended as a video for patients, for surgeons out there, young, especially younger surgeons out there, um, both to educate, but also to share some practices that may or may not be helpful to them. Um, I grew up as a swimmer. Uh, I swam competitively. Uh, from age 6 to 18. Uh, I swam my freshman year in college till I experienced my first shoulder uh, injury and surgery. And then um, worked really, really hard in college and medical school and surgery school or surgical residency uh, for a total of 13 years. Uh, four years of college, four years of medical school, and five years of surgical training. So that's 13 years after high school before I became a surgeon and got my first job. Um, that's longer than the time I swam. I grew up swimming competitively and I lost a little bit of perspective in terms of the, the need to exercise um, and found cardiovascular exercise. Um, I ran or jogged a little bit. I rode a bicycle a little bit. And for my first 15 years of my surgical career, spent uh, time exercising cardio. Uh, I rode the bike a lot. Um, I felt good, uh, but I could feel my body age. I experienced uh, a couple more shoulder injuries, um, maybe from swimming, maybe just from deconditioning. And um, when I was in um, surgical residency as a fourth year resident, a, I still remember being in the operating room. Back then it was Boston City Hospital, now it's Boston Medical Center. And there was a pregnant nurse in the operating room who uh, passed out right in front of me. And instinctively I reached down and grabbed her head before it slammed down to the the hard floor um, and she did fine, but I felt like someone uh, stabbed me in the back with a, a sharp, hot knife. Um, that was before MRIs were, were prevalent. I, I had herniated L4, L5 disc, um, spent three days at bed rest and um, thought it was over. However, that injury kind of kept uh, rearing its ugly head and nagging me on and off over the first 15 years of my surgical career. Finally, um, I um, met a physical therapist, uh, Andrew Millett, who started Move Strong Physical Therapy. Um, and this was in the, the, the late 20 teens. And um, I saw him both for my back, for my shoulder, and he introduced me to the concept of strength training. And um, I worked with uh, coaches from Cressy Sports Performance after graduating from Andrew's Physical Therapy um, and eventually started working out at uh, CSP or Cressy Sports Performance in uh, Hudson, Mass. Started by Eric Cressy, um, who now overseas operations uh, at its facility in Florida, um, as well as uh, overall performance in, in Massachusetts. And I believe he is still working for the New York Yankees as hard, part of their sports performance or running their sports performance team. Um, the unique thing that I learned um, over the last five years is that at least for me, strength training is a little bit like brushing teeth. Um, it 
it's a non-negotiable. It's a little bit like sleep. It's non-negotiable. If I get it five, four times a week, um, I am able to feel younger. I have more energy. I have more strength than anything I do. I can pick up new hobbies and new activities without really worrying about, am I gonna get injured? But more importantly for my career, um, I have more physical endurance in the operating room. I have more energy. I have not had back pain in the operating room in years. And that allows me to focus on my patients. I don't have anything distracting me, a discomfort distracting me. And so um, my surgical performance has improved. Um, of course, it's been five years of four times a week strength training. And in that time period, I have performed uh, over 2,500 hernia operations. So just by sheer practice, I've gotten better uh, in my surgical technique. Um, and that's partly because I've had a coach uh, at my side. One of our two physician assistants assists me in almost every surgery I've had another surgeon, my partner, Dr. Fullington, um, who assists me on surgery on occasion. We learn from one another. And so, um, you know, this concept of, of coaching in the operating room works just like any other physical or mental activity. If you have a coach, you get better. Um, but the same for the physical preparation for uh, my work. Um, while I'm not a professional baseball player like many of the athletes who uh, come to Cressy Sports Performance, treating my body and preparing for surgery like a professional athlete has had huge impacts on my ability to perform better surgery and to really perform in the operating room. I've met a few other surgeons who share some of this philosophy and um, they're usually the, the more efficient and better surgeons with lower complication rates. And so I think we have a lot of data that's come out that strength training is really important, uh, both for longevity, um, also for injury prevention. Um, of course, cardio is important as well, but I think that uh, strength training is a really missing component uh, when we teach our students, our surgical residents, our fellow doctors of what they need to do to take care of their bodies. And um, I wanted to make this video um, specifically uh, to try to get the word out. Um, you know, if you're out there, if you, if you are a surgeon, if, you know, honestly, anyone, and you um, have not incorporate some sort of resistance or strength training into your your programs into your life uh, try it um, I think you'll feel better um, and as an aside you know in my daily routine at work about a third of the patients that come to me or to Boston hernia with um, growing pain, pain in the inguinal region, um, have a core muscle injury. They have an imbalance in their core, uh, often from a pelvic tilt. You see this in cyclists who um, ride a bike a lot and they're, they're kind of leaning forward and their pelvis is tilted. I see it in runners. Um, I don't see it in weightlifters. Um, see in people who sit, sit at the desk all day. Um, a lot of us kind of navigate through life working in a single direction or a single plane. We walk forward, we run forward, we ride our bike forward, you row in one direction. Um, a lot of the cardio exercises uh, don't involve a lot of twisting motions and side to side motions. And uh, incorporating exercise program that um, use the whole body, use the whole core. 
um, can make a difference. So um, I am not an expert on the type of exercises that each individual will benefit from, but working either with a personal trainer or a strength coach uh, can have huge, um, huge benefits um, to you out there who are, are thinking about this. Um, so thank you for listening this far. I know it's a long video, it's a lot of information, uh, but I've always wanted to share that uh, how much work I put into getting ready to perform in the operating room. It's not just about the surgical training, the mental training, reading textbooks, reading journal articles. Um, I train physically by lifting heavy weights to prepare for surgery.